when I heard of a canine breed called the Canadian Eskimo. I knew I wanted to learn more about these dogs. After researching, I found a lady in Alberta that breeds them. fun. I'm on my way to Alberta. I'm going to be driving over the Rocky Mountains. I love the Rocky Mountains. These places are just amazing. I can't believe how high that these Rocky Mountains could stretch to the sky. I'm going to be meeting Shannon. She loves her dogs and I can see why. They are so cute. Hopefully this weather can hold up. I'll see you guys there. Before I get to this shoot, there's a special place I want to check out. So behind me is the biggest dinosaur in the world. I'm at the Royal Terrell Museum in Alberta. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, this museum is the biggest in the world with over 1,100 fossilized dinosaurs. With every room I enter, I am blown away by how powerful these creatures must have been when they were alive. These dinosaurs used to fight with the Tyrannosaurus rex. This is called the Bogo Taurus. This is called the go Gogo. The Jorgo. This go Gojo. Uh, Jogo. This stupid dinosaur used to fight with all the other dinosaurs including the T-Rex. I mean, just look at the power of the jaws. Imagine if you were, you know, living back then as a caveman and this comes charging out at you. I don't know about you, but I would definitely just pee my pants like I am doing right now. Wow, this is so cool. Come here, come. This here is just a flipper. And people around the world have said they have seen the Loch Ness Monster. Just maybe this monster that they called Loch Ness could be one of these uh, ancient reptiles that lived millions of years ago. The name of this uh, giant uh, reptile is, uh, I have no idea. Yeah, it's a Loch Ness Monster. Wow, this is crazy. Can you imagine if this creature was still alive today and you're hiking around and instead of a moose or an elk or a bear coming chasing you, it turns out to be one of these transverse wrecks? That would be brilliant. It would make life way more exciting. I was so inspired by these monstrous dinosaurs that I had to journey into the Badlands to see if I could find any fossils. It was unbelievable how beautiful and unforgiving these lands can be. And getting lost here would mean certain death. And even if I don't find any bones, I have found an experience 
that will live on in my heart forever. Oh, almost lost my balance here. This is what is called a hoodoo. These have been formed for hundreds of years. And what happens is the rain, the snow, the sleet, over time, the weather erodes the sandstone underneath. And this will just crumble and fall into place. This will probably slide down there, but it's absolutely amazing. This is a crazy place. I am so glad that I came up here to see this. It's a shame. Another 40 or 50 years, this may not be here. But my time here in Drumheller is over. And right now I'm on my way to another location in Alberta where I'm going to be able to film, meet, and interview Shannon. She owns the most beautiful dogs. These are Canadian Eskimo dogs. Dear. It's gonna take me a you know a couple hours to get there. Just finished doing some camping right now. This is Shannon. I'm about to meet Shannon and her dogs. Hey, Shannon. Hi, Jason. Hi, nice. So glad you came. Oh, I'm so happy to meet you. So, where's your dogs? On this way. All right. Cool. There they are. They're so cute. Hi, guys. This is Arctic Sun Siberian Huskies and Canadian Eskimo dogs. And how long have you been doing this for? I started showing about 1975. Years and years ago, I met up with some Canadian Eskimo dogs that were sent down from uh, Carpenter. He brought the dogs down to Dynavor, uh, the boys school there, and they already had a number of Siberian Huskies with me and I met those Canadian Eskimo dogs and just was intrigued with them. I've got a degree in agriculture and so pedigrees, animal science, that sort of thing is a fascination with me. And being as this is Canada's living legend, you know, it's, it's our own breed, one of our native breeds. It's also a land race breed and the history and pedigree behind them is amazing. Because I enjoy mushing, well Canadian Eskimo dogs, that's fabulous. It's a great connection for me. They're a little bit different. I've had Malamutes in the past. I've had Siberian Huskies. I still have Siberian Huskies and I find them to be kind of halfway between the two breeds. So the Canadian Eskimo dog is a, a little more primitive. They're a really silly breed. Otherwise, you know, they're once you've begun working with a lot of trapline dogs and uh, the mushing dogs, Alaskan Huskies, Siberian Huskies, all the polar breeds, they've got a very uh, similar familial sort of set. Boy, huge things now. She wasn't standing in deep grass. She'd of course look a little bit bigger. Hi. You're very cute. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, you're cute too. Hi, you're very cute. Now I can pay you. Look at you. You're too tired to, to run from me. I should come out here uh, when the mosquitoes aren't trying to drag me away. Yeah, there's something else out here. Every day is just fabulous with them, right? Even when they get your shoes or dig a new hole. Uh, I love them. I just absolutely love them. But you'll have to come out in winter. And this year we're ready to try our first fan hitch instead of in the double team formation and that could be pretty wild. You know it was great meeting you. Yeah, nice to meet I you I want too. to say thank you so much for having me come I'm here and have you out. photograph your uh, furry friends and uh, to hear your story about why you love these dogs so much. Oh yeah. But now my animal adventure has ended and I'm on to my next journey. What is that going to be? I don't know but I'll let you in on a secret. It's going to be fun every time. Until then I want you to remember to always support your local animal rescues. See ya.
Living out here in the wilderness can be a challenge. I wanted to try out this new tent that I purchased. Oh boy, this is going to be great. Okay, this is a fail.